look at setting up a drawing in the new version of LibreCAD, version 2.1.0. And when you first open up LibreCAD, you'll notice that the interface is quite a bit different from version in the past, version 2.0.8. Um, the new version, they've totally reworked the interface. However, most of the buttons are all very similar. So the first thing we're going to do when we open up LibreCAD, of course, is we want to have a look at, uh, under the settings here, you have the application settings and you have current drawing settings. Now when you open it, LibreCAD, it opens automatically in the new drawing window, so you can begin to draw right there. But before we do this, let's have a look at some of the application settings. Now. Here we have the ability to set up all the tools that we'll be working with here. And you can change the background and the grid dot colors. Um, you might prefer a gray background instead of the black. Many people prefer the black and black is okay. And you can set any of those colors that are listed there. And then of course you can set the paths to certain features that you have and the drawing units. Now that would be for the whole application but we're not going to bother setting the drawing units as standard for the application because we might change uh, our drawing units. What we'll do is we will set up the units for the particular drawing that we are doing. Okay, so let's turn this back to black and let's go have a look at the current drawing. Now, A4 paper, this is your paper size. A4 paper is quite standard and then you've got your landscape and your portrait views. And uh, landscape will be long and shorter distance in height. Landscape is quite often an attractive setup to use. And here is the size of the landscape paper, 297 by 210 millimeters. Here's our units here. Now we could actually draw in millimeters, that's quite common nowadays, or we could go to inches or whatever we like. But we, we can stay in millimeters here and we can decide on which standard we would use, fractional, scientific, decimal. Decimal is the default, and the same with degrees in, in decimal. Here's your grid settings for orthogonal or isometric. And orthogonal will be most of our drawings on a 2D system. However, isometric, that would set the grid lines at a 30 degree angle which will give you the impression that you're drawing on a 3D scale. Dimensions here. Now there is a lot of dimensions to set up on this drawing depending on your, your uh, preference. Um, you've got the drawing scale size and the uh, text size can be set to match your drawing. And the extension lines and the arrows and a few other things. Now splines, the number of segments per inch. So let's, uh, let's use the A4 paper in the landscape view. Let's use the millimeter as our drawing units. Let's show the grid and we'll use the orthogonal grid. Most of these drawing settings will be satisfactory at the default settings just as they are. However, if you want smaller arrow sizes and stuff you can adjust that. But the default settings while you're learning the system will work satisfactory while you're setting up your drawing. Okay. 
So once we've got our drawing set up here, we will notice that in version 2.08, the command line is down here at the bottom. But now the command line is over here on this side. And here are your layers here. And one of the first things we want to do, we always have a default layer zero, but we should set up some more layers that we will be drawing in. And to add those layers, we'll just push on the add button here. And some good layers to have would be uh, for hidden lines. Okay. And you could choose the color for your hidden lines. Perhaps they'd be a light green. And you could choose the thickness for your line. And whether they're continuous or dash dot or whatever. So we'll use continuous lines for setting up. And we'll use a thin line because they're hidden lines. Okay, now that's there. Now we'll add another layer for perhaps uh, dimension lines. Dimension lines. And for dimension lines, maybe we'll use a color blue. And these could be the width on the dimension line, could be a little thicker if we wanted. And we'll use continuous lines there. And we'll add another. center lines maybe center lines and maybe for center lines we could use red and we could use a small on this particular drawing because it's not very large we could use a small dash dot Okay, so that gives you an idea of adding a few layers in there. Now the first thing, you can add more layers as you're going along. The big thing is, is to make sure that you're on the particular uh, layer that you're going to be using while you are working. So if we were doing center lines, we'd highlight the center. If we're going to write dimensions, we would highlight dimensions. If we're going to be working on the hidden lines, we'd highlight hidden lines. And then, of course, we can turn those lines on or off through this option here. Now, I don't have a construction layer added in here. I will use this default layer 0 as the construction layer. So if we highlight default layer, and let's just check the properties of that and see what they are. And the construction layer is set in black and white. And thickness and continuous. you'll notice that I've changed a few of these here, added some hatches, and let's make the last one sections, and let's make those blue instead of the other one. We changed the dimensions to magenta, and let's go with 0 0.5 continuous. Okay, now we've got some layers here with define a certain things we'll use on our basic drawing here. Okay, so now we can get started putting some lines on. 
One of the first things you want to maybe do is put a border on your piece of paper here. Now, a border you may not want to add, but it doesn't hurt to put a border on. And you want five units for your border. And remember now, if we go to settings and here to the drawing settings, we can see that we have the A4 paper, landscape, and here are the dimensions. So if we want five units of border on each side of our paper, then our border would come in, would be 10 smaller than this 297 in the one direction, and in the other direction, we would be 10 smaller than 210. So to get our border, let's go ahead and make sure we're on layer zero put our border on layer zero and let's choose the rectangle to make a border and an important thing is to make sure that we're relative to the zero zero mark here our drawing should always be located from this point here so let's go ahead in the command line here and we'll just click in the command line and let's type our coordinates as 0, comma 0. And the next coordinates we'll add will be 287, comma, by 200. Okay, and we'll enter that. Now you can see our border has gone in here and it's all around the paper. Let's just shrink our paper down so we can see. There's our border that we just put in. Okay, our border is on layer zero and layer zero uses the black white line color. Okay, so there's our border. Now let's just increase this back up on the size here. And we have our border. So using the command line here is going to be your friend. Now you'll also notice down here we have the snaps. And snaps will allow us on certain points, snap on endpoints, free snap, snap on grid, that's to the grid marks. Uh, if we're using circles or arcs, this will locate the snap to the center. Uh, or to the middle, where we can snap a distance, or we can snap at an intersection of a line like here. So these snaps will be your friend, and it's good to uh, to get familiar with those and use those. Now, if we're going to begin to draw a plain, simple figure here, part of a section of our drawing we'll want to move to the sections layer and perhaps choose the line. Now you'll notice that lines are in different orientations here. This is a vertical line. This here is a horizontal line. This is at an angle and this is a line between two points. So if we're going to start our drawing it will be good to use the simple line tool up top here. If we just choose, say, a vertical line, you'll notice that we get a setup here that will allow us to put in the units of our line. And uh, we were drawing this drawing in millimeters, which are not uh, very big units. So let's set a unit here of say 20 millimeters and let's choose a place to start our drawing. Perhaps here in this. We'll use a free snap and we'll move over here with our lines and we'll snap right there. 
Okay, now you'll notice the line went downwards. You see the blue line there? So let us undo that. And that would tell us here that we need to go in the other direction. So let's just put a negative sign ahead of our 20 here. And let's change this to increase our drawing size. Okay, so we have 100 here, units high. Now, if we'd like to go over to the right here, a certain number of units, let's choose the horizontal line, and let's choose an end snap. Turn off the free snaps, turn on the end snap, and let's set our unit to negative 40. Okay, negative 40 will let us go this way. And there you go. You see? Now, we're still snapping on the end. So let's say we wish to go up again. Let's go vertical. And this time, let's only go 50 units up now if we desire to come back to the left here then we use the horizontal again still on the end snaps and let's say we wish to go 140 But we're going in the opposite direction this time, so we can remove the negative sign. And there we are. Now if we wish to come back down, we could choose the vertical again. And we no longer need the negative sign. So let's take the negative sign out and let's go down 70 units okay now if we wish to go horizontal again we will go horizontally negative 30 units that will bring us to the right okay now if we wish to go up again We'll choose the vertical and still using end snaps and to go up we will have to add the negative sign and let's go up 30 units okay now if we wish to go over to the horizontal to the right again let's choose the horizontal and let's leave it at negative 30 units that will go to the right 30 units and now if we wish to go down we'll choose the vertical still with the end snaps and let's go down say 120 units us over here and we could then go horizontally to the right and let's go to the right 30 units see where that brings us and we're not quite there so if we like, we can go vertically again, perhaps negative 10 units to go up, and it looks like we're pretty close there. So let's join these lines by coming across to the right, 
so horizontally let's go negative 10 units from this point actually to join these two points rather than putting in a unit let's just join the two ends from the end point to this here point okay a line between two points and there's the other point there and there we are now you can see here that our lines are not quite true let's just let's move that drawing up to where we can see let's expand it a little bit zoom in a bit and you can see that this line is not straight so what we will do here is we can undo that last step and we could extend this line a little bit to extend this line a little bit we could go to the modify section here and find the trim there's a lengthen here let's lengthen this one it's telling us over here we chose the lengthen and over here it says select the entity to trim or a distance okay so we're going to select this entity to trim and by clicking on it it increases by the length of the unit we have if we clicked on it again it will increase again okay so we undo that now let's choose horizontal here and let's go our 10 units to the right and there you have it now you can see if we move in here as we zoom in a little bit that we actually have uh, gone past there so let's do a little trimming again from the modifying here let's choose the trim and it says select limiting entity now that would be where we want to trim to so if we choose this line that would limit our trim okay and then select entity to trim well that would be this one here that sticks out so let's just select that and we went the wrong way so let's undo that and let's click let's select trim and select the entity to trim to the limiting entity and let's click on this side of the line and that trims us to there now you'll notice I have a little point here that I began with which I do not need so we can go to the attributes here select attributes to modify and I want to modify this little blue dot in here so we'll just click on that and we push the delete key on our keyboard and it's gone now let's
let's zoom back in here. There we go. And let's slide our drawing back down this way. Now you've seen how to use a few of these tools. Basically the rectangular tool and the basic line drawing tool and how to maneuver horizontally or vertically or a line between two points as we did here and you've learned how to use these snaps for the basic line layout. Okay, now let's try to put some dimensions on here. Here is your dimensioning section here. For the dimension lines here, we have info select dimensions. You can edit your properties. Now we're going to be running straight dimensions on a horizontal, so let's choose this one here. Let's make sure we're on the dimension line layer. And let's choose this point and let's choose this point let's make sure we're on the free snap okay you want to be on the free snap so that you can move your dimensions and let's put it there okay now a vertical dimension we'll choose this one and let's go back to the end snap there and there and we can put our dimension there again we could choose this one with the end snaps chosen and this one we have noticed the end snaps and free snap both chosen. Okay, if we take the free snaps off, then you'll see that we cannot move out. So by adding the end snaps, it helps us locate, and then the free snap as well allows us to move outwards. Okay. Here again because the end snaps are on we can easily get the snaps and we can move out because of the free snap chosen here okay let's choose some more horizontal horizontal there we go if we want to do an inside just right mouse click to shut it off and there you have it there's a basic line drawing a border and some dimensions and that may help you get started on using your LibriCAD remember that you want to save your drawing you can save your drawing basically anywhere you like. Now let's just name this practice. Practice drawing and choose the folder you want to put it into and it will save it by default as a drawing file from 207. You've got older drawing files or you can save it as an R14 or an R12 from AutoCAD and we'll just leave it in the standard drawing file and we'll save that. Okay. I hope you found this tutorial somewhat helpful in
finding your way around LibriCAD, the newer version with the new interface, uh, LibriCAD 2.1.0. Thanks for watching. How to Pam.